When a uranium exploration company releases its results, the numbers can be quite daunting. They can be exciting, they can be confusing, they're providing grades, they're providing counts per second and widths, and it's all necessary in understanding what you're looking at and whether the results that you're reading about are just fluff or in fact they're a discovery that truly needs to be paid attention to. In this video, I wanna walk through the four things you should specifically be paying attention to when you're reading the results from exploration companies and the uranium space. Now, what you're going to find is when an exploration company initially puts out results of something they wanna call a discovery, the numbers they'll be releasing are in counts per second, or CPS. And what that is a tracking of the uh, radiation that is coming off of a sample that they've taken. And it's usually being read by a handheld scintillometer, or it could be a downhole probe or gamma reader. But what it is coming up with is how much radiation is coming off of any particular sample or core sample. So now modestly, if you run one of these instruments over any rock, quite frankly, in northern Saskatchewan, you're going to come up with a background counts per second of about 200 counts per second. So your counts per second are going to spike when you hit something that's radioactive. By and large, your background radioactivity you're going to see in most rocks in northern Saskatchewan is about 200 counts per second. Once you start to get into something north of 10,000 counts per second, you've, you may be running into something of importance that should be paid attention to. Certainly anything over 20,000 counts per second, and this could be the edge of something very important, and it's not unusual to see something in excess of 50 to 100,000 counts per second when you're on the edge of what could be a major deposit. The one thing to keep in mind, however, when you do see somebody just putting out their results in counts per second, is that well over 90% of the exploration drill holes that are performed in northern Saskatchewan come up with absolutely no mineralization, no radioactivity, not even background sometimes. And that isn't necessarily because the project is bad or the land is bad. It's because the deposits we're looking at are rather compact and tightly held, and they cover a lot of area. And more importantly, they can be missed by as little as 50 meters. Many of these deposits truly are like trying to find a needle in a haystack. And at 50 meters, you're looking at something that is less than half of a football field. Many drill campaigns have drilled countless holes around a deposit, missing it by maybe 100 meters. And it's taken a lot of time and understanding and interpretation of those results to eventually hone in on the goal. So what this means for investors is that in the context of where most holes are showing nothing, when you see holes returning pretty significant counts per second, it's certainly worth noting. But it's not the whole story. It could well be the beginning of a very big story. The real measure of value, though, comes from grade, and that's our second point. Once these samples are sent to the lab, what you'll get back are assays or uranium content, usually in terms of a percentage of U308. But keep in mind, where the average grade globally of uranium is in the area of 0.1%, the grades that are coming out of northern Saskatchewan and the Athabasca Basin are much higher than that. They have 5%, 10%, 20%, .20%, some higher. So we are constantly looking at grades in this particular area that are anywhere from 50 to 200 times higher than the global average. Now, what higher grades can mean to a project is undoubtedly smaller, more efficient, higher economic operations, and certainly a smaller footprint. What this means for investors is these higher grades can translate very quickly into world-class value. But again, it's not necessarily the whole story. Now, while counts per second and grade will certainly turn into big headlines, what has the potential to turn this into a real deposit is width. Why is width important? It's important because mining is all about volume. And in our case, we need to make sure that we have found enough of it to make it mineable. So we're looking at widths of mineralization that may be 5, 10 meters, enough to adequately and to make it worthwhile to actually mine out of the ground. One of the things to remember that was always reminded to me is that the width of a front end loader is about 2, 3, 4 meters wide. So when you've got to shovel that much dirt out of the ground, that grade has to be carrying out throughout that entire width. And what's more important than width is true width, which is a perpendicular line through your deposit. What you want to be seeing is growth in terms of width, in terms of strength. You want to be seeing an ongoing improvement and increase in the size and volume of whatever this is, hopefully a deposit that is being advanced by this particular explorer. What this means for investors is that once the assays are in, what you need to be watching for is width and scale and making sure that the ongoing step outs of these holes are creating a bigger and bigger opportunity. Finally, what's really gonna separate a few holes from a true discovery is going to be continuity. You wanna see that as the results are coming out, that you're seeing some continuity 
and a growing footprint. Where accounts per second and grade might move a stock, you have to remember it is not creating a deposit in and of itself. What you want to see is confirmation of the orientation. You want to see repeats of intercepts. You want to see it beginning to outline a zone, not just a point. The big discoveries in the basin like Arrow, like Rough Rider, they didn't just come from one great hole. They came from a great deal of follow-up drilling, sometimes 20, 30, more than 50 holes before they are able to stand back and say, yes, we have a deposit. So what this means for investors is that one drill hole is really just a data point. Two or three holes are starting hopefully to assemble a pattern, but continuity is what's really going to outline a deposit. And that's what one needs to be watching as they're following the advancement of a project by an explorer. So remember, as you're following the progress of an explorer, accounts per second is going to certainly grab your interest. Grade is going to prove that you've got a hit. If you start to see some width, then you're starting to see growth in a zone, but uh, continuity is going to demonstrate that you really are looking at a deposit. So remember in uranium exploration, where more than 90% of your exploration drill holes are coming up with nothing, when you do see somebody coming up with something, even if it's a narrow find, it's, it is certainly something important that needs to be followed up on. Now, if you found this interesting, I wish you would take a look at a couple more of these.